Hi everybody, my name is Emily and I'm here to talk to you about doing library research for your community nutrition projects in your class this term. I'm the librarian at Portland State for Urban and Public Affairs, so I work with classes in public health. You may or may not have seen me before in one of your previous classes. Um, but I'm really happy to be working with you. I've been working with Dr. Azumi for several years now on projects for this very class, so I know what you'll be doing and the kinds of things you might be talking about. So in this class, you're gonna be doing research under the social ecological model of health. And I think that goes for all of the research that you're gonna be doing can um, needs to be done with this in mind. The model I have here, the image, it might not look exactly like what you've talked about in your course, neither, and the bullet points might also be a little bit different, but I think in general, if you've paid attention to what you talk about, you can map together how library research falls into that and how you can organize it. So let's talk about the steps for researching under this social ecological model. You're going to have to describe the problem. You're going to have to describe the population you're talking about, and you're going to have to research solutions for the problem at all levels of the social ecological model. And finally, uh, in, in the research steps, you will definitely need to be citing your sources, whether it's on a poster presentation, a blog or discussion post for class, whatever you do. If it's your infographic, you need to still be citing your sources that you get. So let's talk about library research really quickly and how to get help. First, there are a lot of resources for you for this class. The main one is that I have created for you a research guide, and that research guide walks you through the steps for research that you need for community nutrition and for the social ecological model of research. Um, it will be, you have the link here on this slide, but it's also linked from your D2L homepage and the course guides page on the PSU Library website. There are other how-to and subject guides that are also meant to help you with your work in this class and others. You'll see here a screenshot of our Ask Us page. There's also other ways to get help. You can chat with a librarian 24-7. Our library DIY portal will take you through a flowchart of steps of the kind of help you need so you can get help um, on your own terms for a particular question. There's an email web form that's answered within 24 hours, five days a week. And then you may also visit us in person at the reference desk. You'll notice that the screenshot says that we're closed during the week, but that's because I'm recording this presentation while campus is closed over the December holiday. So the first step in your research is going to be to describe your problem. I have a screenshot here of your course guide. Now in the beginning of the process, defining the problem also can be like defining your topic for your research. So you might watch the video on topic development. I think also that you could look at reference works like encyclopedias or handbooks that will describe more in depth some of the problems that you're facing in community nutrition or public health. These reference sources aren't necessarily like the World Book Encyclopedia you may remember from um, earlier schooling in elementary school. They're scholarly sources, and they're written on topics and perspectives in academic disciplines. There's a search widget on this page you can use to look for resources um, to help you define your topic and define the problem. Now remember, you are using the social ecological model, so you want to be looking for information from different areas. Um, I think that first-person narratives, which you aren't going to be finding in these sources, but maybe your own personal experience are the individual or interpersonal. Organizational websites, also not linked on this page, but if you know of an organization working on a problem, they might also describe the problem for you. And then white papers, reports, and statistics can talk about that um, policy or societal level of a problem. And some of those sources are linked for you here on this page as well. The second step in your research will be to describe the population. You may have heard of the word demographics before, and that's a lot of what describing a population can be. It's using demographic information. Demographics describe um, things like uh, age, race, gender, ethnicity, religion, income, etc. So those statistics or things that give us a picture of what, an, a, what a population looks like. 
on this page of your course guide, you'll find that there is also a video tutorial about how to find demographic information with a tool called Social Explorer. It is a fantastic source for you, and I'd highly encourage you to watch that video and use that resource. You'll also notice a box for other data sources, and it includes some community nutrition or food related um, sources that might help you describe populations in terms of food for your research question. Your next step is going to be researching solutions. Has a solution been implemented yet? Has someone done research on a solution and proven whether it works or not? Um, most of these things on this um, researching solutions page of your guide, uh, the, the solutions you're going to be finding are probably going to be published in research articles. So those peer-reviewed academic scholarly research articles that were published in journals. Um, you might find some of it in books and ebooks. So there's some links to books and ebooks on that page for you as well. Now you want to make sure that you think about creating a search strategy that is effective for you. So on that page you see some tips for changing your research question into a search strategy as well as a video on brainstorming keywords from your topic to inform a search strategy. Finally, when you're done and presenting your research, you really need to cite your sources. So there's a page on this guide for citing sources. Now, I have here a big bullet, don't plagiarize. What is plagiarism? It's using somebody else's ideas or words and passing them off as your own. You need to be really cognizant and aware of this because sometimes it's actually pretty easy to do even if you're not realizing it. So you need to pay extra special attention. If the idea is not yours, you must cite it. If you use a statistic, you must cite where you found it. If you are disputing an idea or a piece of evidence, you must cite the source of what you are disputing and you need to cite sources supporting your dispute. All right, I wanna wrap this up now. Again, I want to remind you about some of the sources for getting help from the library. Here you have my contact information with email. I'm more than happy to help you with questions on your library research for community nutrition. If you do email me, I have two rules of thumb. One, please put the course number in your email subject line. And then the second, give me at least, give me three days to get back to you, three working days. Good luck on your research projects, everyone.